let's talk about cholera, a very, very spicy bacteria. So this is Vibrio cholerae, more commonly known as cholera. It is a very spicy waterborne pathogen that you can get through improper sanitization as well as unclean water supplies. Basically, it's in food or water. If you drink contaminated water, you could get the disease. If somebody who has a cholera bacteria doesn't properly wash their hands, then they touch food or something, you can get the disease. And it's basically overall not a good time. It's not very prevalent in um, more Western countries due to increased access of clean drinking water, but in more third world and underdeveloped countries, it is a very common disease. So symptoms of this include things like headache, um, thirst, as well as vomiting, and the most common one, very, very watery diarrhea leading to dehydration. This is because the cholera bacteria secrete something known as the cholera toxin. So this is the cholera toxin, the kind of molecular makeup, whatever, this is kind of how it looks. And it enters cells by endocytosis, so basically just comes into the cell. It enters the endoplasmic reticulum of your cells and alters something called adenylene cyclase, which is responsible for turning ATP, the currency energy source of your cell, into cyclic AMP, or CAMP. Now, once it's in the cell, it causes all sorts of problems. Mainly, it causes much increased levels of CAMP. And kind of what this does is it causes ions, so charged either positively or negatively atoms, to be pumped out of the cell. And that has a lot of problems on the osmotic effects of the cell. So when ions are pumped out, the concentration of the ions outside of the cell increases. So now there's a higher concentration of ions outside the cell than inside the cell. And so naturally water wants to kind of balance that back out. So water flows from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell in order to try to balance the concentration of those ions outside of the cell. However, in doing so, there is no more water in the cell, so your cell just, just does not have enough water and gets dehydrated. This happens specifically in the intestines, so all of the water in your intestinal cells are is rushing out into the intestinal space itself, causing way too much water to be in the just juice inside your guts and none of it inside your cells. Now, this results in two things. One is super watery diarrhea because there's all that excess water inside your gut now mixing with this stuff inside your gut, so it makes it super watery. The other one is extreme dehydration of your cells because all the water is leaving. So essentially, cholera infections lead to just very, very rapid dehydration because you're unable to retain any fluids. At the same time, you're also losing excessive amounts of fluids. And if untreated, this can very, very quickly lead to death. Fortunately, it is relatively easy to treat if you have the proper treatments available. Most of the time, you just need to stay hydrated with an IV drip in order to, like, just stay hydrated long enough for the cholera to be taken care of by the immune system. However, unfortunately, in lots of places, death due to cholera is still very common just because there isn't access to the proper medical treatment necessary for rehydrating the patients after severe dehydration. This is especially common in children who have a somewhat weakened immune system and they're very susceptible for dehydration, as well as the elderly. So yeah, basically, wash your hands and make sure if you are able to, you're drinking clean water.